Okay, this is not the maximal way that methane, CH4, can actually be drawn. The C can be attached to the H's, not in 90 degree fashion that you see here in two dimensions, but in three dimensions like this. Look at that. That's called a tetrahedral shape. So tetrahedral because there's four bonds or four effective pairs. And every time you have four effective pairs, you've got a tetrahedral arrangement of electrons. Now, in this tetrahedron that you see here, or tetrahedral shape, you've got 109 degree bond angles between these elements. A lot better than the 90 between the hydrogens here. And so this maximizes in three dimensions the way the molecule would look. Tetrahedral. But, if we have something like ammonia, which also has one, two, three, four effective pairs, but one lone pair and three bonding pairs, then it's going to have a bit of a different shape. So you just take this, suck the top off of that, and put in a pair of electrons up here. But something called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory tells us that the lone pairs occupy, occupy more space than bonding electrons, so they force the lone pair up here, forces the bonds down here to about a 107 degree difference. And ammonia looks like that. We just put the nitrogen in there, the blue instead of black. Okay, fine. So there is your pyramidal shape for this. Now, in the tetrahedral, we look at that and we say, you know, all those bond angles look equivalent to me, and because they are all the way around, that is a nonpolar molecule. But in this one, nitrogen is more, more electronegative than hydrogen, so the, that line pointing from the hydrogen to nitrogen going this way, going this way, going this way, none of them really cancel out with anything coming down like they did in the tetrahedral. Pyramidal shapes give you polar. Now, how about water, which is bent? Well, it's just taking the pyramidal and going... And now you've got a V-shape or a bent shape. And, again, it's a polar molecule because this line and this line don't cancel out. And water is this bent shape. Where are those lone pairs again? Up here and over here, forming a tetrahedron. So it's really a tetrahedral structure, but it's got two lone pairs. We don't count the lone pairs in the name of the shape, and that's a V-shape, or bent. Okay, so then how about HF? Well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? You're going to have to have a linear shape for that one. That's called linear. Effective pairs here, here, and here, they're in a tetrahedral arrangement, but that's a linear molecule. A three effective pairs are a little different. This doesn't look like three effective pairs, so it does it for this formula C2H4. When you build it like this, it looks like you've got one, two, three, four effective pairs around that carbon, so it should be tetrahedral. Now, count multiple bonds as one effective pair. That's the rule. That's the bending of the rule you have to do here. Multiple bond is one. So this carbon has one, two, three effective pairs. And when you have that, the maximal distance that the electrons can get away in terms of bond angles in a circle is 120 degrees. So, in this molecule here, you have a carbon attached to a carbon. This carbon is also attached to a hydrogen in here and here. If you look at this much of it right there, 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 and there. They're all 120 degrees away from each other, flat, in a plane. Trigonal planar. So remember carbon dioxide from before? It had double bonds going to the oxygens at either end. There you go. Those are springs that are in there. Sure. Now, this carbon has how many effective pairs? One, two. Count the multiple bonds as one. Two effective pairs always give you a linear shape.